Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to upload your application to the Apple App Store, or maybe you've had some issues with your app getting rejected and you're looking for some tips and tricks to help you through the process, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering just that in this video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now, one thing I want to note before we get started is the Apple developer guidelines can change over time, as can the ideas or what is acceptable to the review team. So I would recommend that you always view the most up-to-date Apple developer guidelines for getting your application posted and always make sure to follow any and all local, federal, state, just any guidelines relevant to your app and where you are and where it's going to be made available. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now jumping straight in just as an example to show you that I do have an app in the App Store that has been approved. This is the app that I made using the AppGyber codeless application builder platform to make an app for my channel. So you'll see this is the Tyler Talks mobile application. You have my icon here, the screenshots, uh, etc, etc. So to show you this app in AppGyver, we have the app pulled up right here. Now, if you want to see the functionality for the app and how I built it, check out my channel. There is a video titled something along the lines of how I built the app for my channel, and it walks through how I actually built this application. However, when I made the official build and release, it did get rejected a couple of times for violating some of the guidelines. So I have this link pulled up here, which I will also drop in the description, but you'll see that there are a bunch of different guidelines that you could potentially violate. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean that there's a legal issue. For example, one big guideline that a lot of develop developers seem to struggle with is this minimum functionality guideline. So I got rejected multiple times for this. Now, in order to overcome this, one option is you can log into your Apple developer account once it's been rejected, and there is a resolve option. So effectively, when they say your app does not meet, let's just say the minimum functionality guideline and it violates 4.2.1. They'll typically list a couple of screenshots and options. When you click resolve, you have the option to actually go to the comment and reply to Apple. Now, I replied a couple of times and I didn't feel like I was getting the information I needed. So I actually sent them a message in that application. So when you're in your app on the App Store Connect, you actually have the ability to reply to the Apple review team. I replied to them saying I wanted a call back to discuss the functionality and I actually got a phone call from them within a couple of days and it was a very helpful phone call. I was probably on the call for them between 20 and 30 plus minutes and they were able to walk through some of the things that they like and dislike. Now this is somewhat subjective in my opinion but the idea here is they want things that are app like. Now <clears throat> the app for my channel one of the struggles is I cover quite a range of topics. So they basically said that what I had was a compilation of information, but it wasn't something that brings users back to the app. It's not app-like. It functions similar to a website. Now, my argument was that this seems like most apps out there. Most applications can basically just be a website anyway. It's hard to differentiate between the two. However, the point that they made, um, they're the ones that are in control of the review process. So essentially, I just made sure to ask, what could I add? And they mentioned certain features bring users back to the application. For example, social media or interactive elements and things of that nature. So if you're making an app that's something simple, like let's just say a BMI calculator, so body mass index calculator, very, very simple. So you make something like that, then that fulfills its purpose. People download it for that one reason. So something like that would be easy to get approved. Something like my app where I'm covering tons of different topics is harder because it's just designed to be information, but they argue that that's not something that brings the users back. So what I did to overcome this was add in a couple of social elements to it. So I added in something like this here, which is an app building wall. So when you're at the home screen of my application, you can click on the app building section, and then you can type in a screen name, a topic, and then what's on your mind. And then it will show you uh, essentially like what exactly is going on here. So this is a fitness related topic, you can ignore that. But the idea here is this is a repeating element. Every time someone posts something, it will get summarized here. And if we were to save this, I did the same thing for other areas of the application as well. So you'll see if we go to fitness, there's a fitness wall. 
So the way I overcame the objections that they had was effectively, I focused on the main areas of the platform, which are fitness, app building, and professional development. And then what I did for these was I added a wall where individuals can post content, but I didn't want to deal with the security issues related to having people log in, so I omitted the login screen from the app. So the idea here is when you click on Contact Us, it's just a web page that has a Google form. But Apple said that that is basically just a website, so they don't necessarily like that. And it, I believe it falls under the minimum functionality guidelines. So if you're using AppGyver or a similar platform, one recommendation that I have for you is not to open up a full screen web view for any application. So the idea is when you go to a page, for example, I'll show you what the Contact Us page looks like in this application. And hopefully that'll kind of help you to understand as you can tell there are a lot of um, a lot of pages in this app and we'll go ahead and find the contact us page so what i had to do to make the contact us page kind of meet the requirements so to speak was instead of making it a full size page that just had the web view component from appgyver i made sure to have the ability to have a back button as well. Because in AppGyver, this component brings up a full screen web view page, but you don't have a, an ability to get away from that if you're on an Apple device. So I shrunk the size of this and added in a back button so it's easier to navigate between pages. And um, that was just one small thing that I did. Now, another thing to note here is in AppGyver, when you use the back button, there is a back flow function, but it doesn't seem to work on iPads, or at least the development team said it didn't. So I had to use the navigate to a specific page function instead. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is if your application is just text, for example, when I had a text breakdown for about technology, Something like this that's just static text is likely to get rejected from the App Store because it's not, in their opinion, app-like. And if you have a bunch of web views that just show websites, it's also not going to be very app-like. If yours is just a compilation of YouTube videos and things of that nature, the idea here is they want less static content, more dynamic content, things that change, that update, that bring users back to the application, things that make it look more like an app and less like a website. So one thing that I would recommend for you, especially if you're having issues with this minimum functionality guidelines, they recommend narrowing down what the focus of your app is and developing out features related to that instead of making it a compilation of information. So Examples would be adding social elements where users can interact with each other or upload content or things of that nature, making your content more dynamic and also making it as visually appealing as possible. So these are some of the tips that they gave me and ultimately resulted in my app getting approved in the App Store. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. And again, this is all up to Apple's review guidelines. So I would recommend reviewing those. Over time, these guidelines will change. So just do what you can. Feel free to communicate with their team. And then if you have any questions, check in with the app review team. See if you could set up a call, communicate with them, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get your content submitted and find out what exactly it is that they're looking for. So I hope to see you all in the next video. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe.